Thanks for tuning in to Shooty School. In this video, we'll be learning how to navigate the song track features in Easy Drummer 2. If you're looking for a beginner's video, I recommend watching my Easy Guide to Easy Drummer 2 video first, because here I assume you've already watched my previous videos in this advanced series, so there's no need for an introduction or specifications. I'll link to those videos in the description, and do check out my channel Shooty School for more Easy Drummer 2 tutorials. Let's get started. The song track is where you build your song with MIDI blocks from the Browser tab, Search tab, Song Creator, or Tap the Find feature. It's also where you can record your own drum beats with hardware such as a V-Kit or keyboard, and where you can edit MIDI blocks. Editing and recording MIDI blocks will be covered in a different video. Building song blocks is as easy as dragging MIDI files from the Browser tab, the Search tab, what you may have created and tapped to find. What you've sorted with Song Creator. And what you may have recorded in the song track itself. I have advanced tutorials covering those tabs and features on my channel you may want to check out. Now that I have five MIDI blocks in my song track, I can select one by clicking on it and then hold my shift key and select the next one, or all five files. Alternatively, I could have clicked an empty area of the song track and dragged a marquee around all the files I wanted to select, like this. Or I could have right-clicked on a blank part of the song track and selected Select All. If I wanted to deselect an individual file from this selected group, I could hold Control or Command on Mac and select the files I wish to exclude, and simply Control Command click them again to add them back to my selection. Now that I have all files selected, as you can see they're highlighted, I can click and drag them. Notice that they snap to the ruler hash marks marked just above the MIDI blocks. This is so our MIDI blocks will always be in time with Easy Drummer's metronome or with your DAW. Notice that the more I zoom in with the zoom icon over here on the right side of the song track, the more hash marks I see in the ruler. This should show you that you're not limited to starting a MIDI block on beat one of the measure or every half note, which is the default. And you can zoom all the way in to access 30 second notes. So we can start at any note duration depending on how far you zoom in and simply drag your MIDI blocks to where you want them. Let me zoom back out. I like to use my mouse wheel to zoom in and out, but you can use these zoom buttons over here if you prefer. And if you hold the shift button and use your mouse wheel, you can scroll the song track horizontally like this. Don't forget we have our track overview tool down here as well. Lots of ways to get around quickly. Since I still have all my MIDI blocks selected, I'll drag them to the left and close my unwanted gap at the top of the song. There's no ripple delete function or ways to automatically shuffle MIDI blocks, which is why knowing how to select multiple blocks and deselect individual blocks comes in handy when organizing your song track. Speaking of the beginning of the song, if you right click on the top of the ruler, you can select start at bar zero. If you're using Easy Drummer 2, this isn't very relevant, but if you're using a DAW that starts with bar zero instead of bar one, this may help you stay organized in your DAW session. Also in this menu, you can choose to select show triplets. All this does is change the hash marks in your ruler to triplets so you can snap your MIDI blocks to triplets instead of straight notes. If you don't understand the difference between an 8th note and an 8th note triplet, check out my introduction to counting and note durations video real quick. This is important foundational knowledge worth learning so you can communicate and learn more efficiently with your endeavors. And the other option here is set track length. I'll zoom out. By default, it's 200. I'll set this to 20. If you set this to anything below 50, it will then default to 50, as it did. The only thing I see this being useful for is not having a large amount of empty space after your song to scroll through with the track overview tool. Watch my track overview as I put this back to its default 200. 
I did ask Toontrack what the purpose of this is besides the aforementioned. Please comment below if you know of any other use. Moving on. Now about playback. If I click anywhere on the ruler in the song track, it will place my playback head, or CTI, wherever I click, like this. There's no way to put memory locations or markers in the song track. You have to put the playhead where you want it manually by clicking, unless you're working in a DAW. In that case, your DAW can also control playback for you. With that said, you can get the playback head to go to the top of the track by hitting the stop button here, like this. If I hit stop a second time, it will bring the playhead to the last place I clicked in the song track, like this. I'll place my CTI in the middle somewhere. Now if I hit the play button, the song track will start playing. If I hit the play button again while the song is already playing, it will pause playback at the moment you hit it, like this. You can see that the playhead stopped, but it stays put, meaning pause. Now if I hit play again, I hear my track where I left off. But if I hit the stop button, the playhead doesn't pause in place. It goes backward to where I originally placed the playhead, like this. This is good to acknowledge that hitting the play button the second time pauses playback and lets you continue where you left off when you're ready. And hitting stop after hitting play brings you back to where you were before you initially hit play. And as stated before, if you hit the stop button while the song track is not playing, it will bring your playhead to the top of the track, unless you have loop engaged. Alternatively, if you double click in the ruler, your song will play back right away wherever in the ruler you have double clicked. And while your track is playing, you can single click anywhere in the ruler to adjust the real time playback position. And lastly, if you double click the ruler while your song is playing, it will stop playback. There's quite a few options for these simple navigation tasks. They might even get confusing if you don't understand the redundancy at first, but will envelop into a productive workflow over time if you acknowledge all of your options. That's how you navigate and playback in the song track. Looping is really valuable in Easy Drummer too. You may be working on a drum part that you need continuously looping, or maybe you have your guitar in your hand and you're trying to work out a riff and so on. If you click the loop button, by default, it should loop all of your MIDI blocks like this. You see the orange loop bar in the ruler showing the loop length. Let me click it again so it goes away. Another way to set your looping parameters, which is fast and accurate, is left click and hold on the measure you want to start your loop on and drag it to the bar you want your loop to stop. As you can see, an orange bar has appeared to confirm my loop parameter. What's also really convenient is how to adjust it. Just mouse over the edges of the orange loop bar and drag them to wherever you want your loop to start or end, like this. Now, if you hit the stop button, your playback head will alternate between going to the last place you clicked in the song track or to the beginning of your loop. Now that we have a loop engaged, when you hit stop, your CTI will not go to the beginning of the song anymore, it goes to the beginning of your loop. No matter where your playback head is, when you hit play, the playback head will start from where it has been placed. And then, when it enters your loop parameter, Easy Drummer 2 will then start to loop playback as implied by the orange bar. This is a good way to create pre-roll. Simply start playback a bar or two before your loop section. Lastly, instead of toggling the loop button down here, you can simply click on the orange loop bar to disable and enable it. When you disable it, you can see the orange bar turn gray, implying that the parameter still exists, it's just inactive. If you right click on a single MIDI block and select loop area, it will conveniently loop only the MIDI block you right clicked on. Even handier, if you hit play and then select set loop area, not only will it loop the MIDI block you right clicked on, but the playhead will immediately move to that MIDI block and continue playing. A great way to jump around your timeline, to preview areas of concern or when doing quality control. I'll hit stop. You can also left click and grab and drag your loop bar to wherever you want it in the song track. That's how you control looping in Easy Drummer 2. Let me delete my MIDI blocks. I will skip the record button. I cover recording and editing in a different video. 
Next is the time signature. Simply click and change the time signature to what your project requires. Take note that if you drag a MIDI block to the song track when the song track is completely empty, the project time signature will inherit that MIDI block's time signature. On the search tab, I'll sort by 6-4 time signature. I'll make sure my tap to find drop zone is cleared. And drag a block to my 4-4 song track. You see the project time signature update. You should also note that you cannot change time signatures throughout your song. Only one can exist per project. You can combine different MIDI files that have different time signatures, but you'll have to deal with whatever artifacts derive from that, whether it be how the metronome sounds during playback or how your MIDI blocks snap to the grid, which was explained earlier how that can be adjusted. The pro solution to having multiple time signatures while using Easy Drummer 2 is to use a DAW, for example, Pro Tools, and program your time signature changes into your DAW. When using your DAW, the metronome in Easy Drummer is disabled, and you should use your DAW's metronome. The same technique works with the tempo. You cannot have more than one tempo in Easy Drummer 2. You should use Easy Drummer 2 with your DAW to control tempo changes. This will be covered in my Using Easy Drummer 2 with your DAW video. You can change your project time signature simply by clicking the time signature fraction and making your selection. I'll clear my search results. The search tab is covered in its own video on my channel. In Easy Drummer 2 standalone, you can change your tempo by double clicking, typing your desired tempo, and hitting enter on your keyboard. Or single click it and drag the slider to your desired tempo. Or lastly, click on this button to the speed or tempo you desire and Easy Drummer will detect it, commonly called tap tempo. The metronome, which is disabled when using a DAW, can be engaged by clicking this button. Notice it starts on its own. A very handy feature in my opinion, you simply have a metronome at whatever tempo and time signature you want that you can rehearse or study to without playing the song track. If you hit play, the already sounding metronome will snap back to the song track's timing. So you might hear a metronome momentarily skip or hiccup, like this. I'll stop the metronome by clicking on its button. If you go to the main menu settings up here while in standalone mode, you can click on metronome settings to adjust when the metronome plays. Clicking on only while song track is playing is handy so it's not playing 24 seven. I'll hit the preview button down here so we can hear it while we adjust it. You can change the metronome's note duration here, which comes in handy at super slow tempos or when you're trying to feel triplets. You can change the sound that the first beat makes and its volume here. And also on the rest of the beats throughout the measure here. I think it's really handy that Easy Drummer 2 comes with a fully functioning metronome and now you know how to control it. If you hit OK, it will save my changes. If I hit the X button in the upper right, it will still make the changes, which I think is weird or maybe an oversight on Tune Track's part. Take note that if I don't save my project here, all of the metronome changes we made will be lost when I exit my project like this. I have an entire video that covers the song creator, so I'll skip that. Getting close to the end is the volume slider. I never use this slider unless it's for convenience. I see this volume slider as a master fader, the last volume knob in Easy Drummer 2's signal chain. If you're hearing something that's too loud or distorting, go to your mixer tab and turn your faders down. Or go to your drums tab and turn individual instruments down there. If I'm using a DAW and I hear no distorting instruments, I always control the overall Easy Drummer volume in the DAW, not with this volume slider. That's my preference and I recommend it until I know any better. Feel free to comment below your workflow. Just to the right of the volume slider is a MIDI indicator. You can't control this, but it will let you know by lighting up when Easy Drummer 2 is receiving MIDI from your hardware or DAW and when it's transmitting MIDI out. On the left of the song track, you can use your undo and redo step buttons, along with changing your select tool to a split tool, covered more in depth in my editing and recording video. Down here you've seen me use this track overview tool, which I cover in detail in my song creator video. 
Now lastly, the song track menu here in the upper right of the song track. This will all be covered in my editing video, but I wanted to cover the first track option here. Selecting track, export song as MIDI file will export your entire song track as one single MIDI file. I will instantly create a song never heard before in the song creator, which is covered in a different video on my channel. Then select track, export song as MIDI file, select where on my computer to export it, name it, and save it. There it is on my desktop. Pretty cool. MIDI files do not contain sounds or any mixer settings that you hear or have adjusted in Easy Drummer 2. They're basically just saying when to hit a certain note. It's raw data, along with other types of metadata. The next selection is Export Song as Wave. This is very useful. Your final product of all the MIDI blocks in your song track, their sounds from the drum tab, and the settings from your mixer tab that you've created will be exported as a universal single stereo audio file. I'll click Export Song as WAV file and select the bit depth. 16-bit is standard music quality. You might use 24-bit if you're going to use this exported file professionally for more post-production tasks, like mixing in your DAW for example. 24-bit will yield a larger file size and a higher dynamic response. It seems that Easy Drummer 2 always exports at 44.1K sample rate. I'll hit export. Choose a location and hit save. We're waiting for the export dialog box. There's my new audio file on my desktop that is universal and can be played by just about any computer or program. Lastly, the import MIDI command. I recommend when using your own user MIDI files to use the user MIDI folder in the browser tab. You can also create a custom user library. You can watch my advanced browser video to learn about that workflow. But if you just want to get your own user MIDI file into the song track, simply place your playhead in your song track where you want it to appear and then select import MIDI. I'll import my song from the desktop. That external MIDI file is now in your song track. As you can see, all the parts got consolidated into one MIDI block. You can literally avoid the track MIDI import menu and drag MIDI straight from your hard drive to your song track, like this. The other options in the track menu have been covered in this video or other videos on my channel. The edit play style option is covered in its own video. The song part and use with song creator are covered in my song creator video. The find option can be covered in my search tab or tap to find videos. Change tempo and add to user MIDI can be covered in my browser video. The rest of this menu will be covered in detail in my recording and editing video, so do check that out. So that's it. We made it through navigating the song track. If you learned something today, please like and subscribe. If you're feeling burnt out, take a break and come back and learn more Easy Drummer 2 with a clear head. Or if you're still ready to burn some more brain calories, check out my next Advance with Easy Drummer 2 tutorial right now. I have more Easy Drummer 2 tutorials on my channel. Comments and corrections are always welcome below. Also, any senseless and goofy comments. Thanks for stopping by and rock on.